I received a phone call from a gentleman who says, hey, I saw this ad on Craigslist. This person is claiming that they're going to be bringing uh, this, this girl, they, and they actually had her picture, what was believed to be her picture on, on Craigslist. If you looked at this picture, I would have guessed she was no more than 13. And they were advertising her to have sex and that they were going to bring her to Hayes for the purposes of having sex. And they were offering, who wants to have sex with her? Let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll make the connections. Well, that particular person who called us allowed me to take over his account that allowed us to start to communicate with the potential suspect on this. And in um, <coughs> July 1st, 2015, the sheriff's office receives two additional complaints of very similar conduct. July 2nd, through the, through the legal documentation that we had submitted and gotten back in quick turnaround due to the exigent circumstances, we identified a potential target or suspect who resided in Iowa. We also identified a potential suspect who resided in outside of Hayes in local Ellis County. Through much of this, as an investigator, I said, what's the chances of this just being somebody who's blown smoke? That this isn't real? That's a possibility, right? Or is it real? Is this really somebody who intends to bring a child from Texas to Hayes, America for the sole purpose of having sex? Do you think we could risk that chance? We had a couple meetings. We, we, what's the possibility of this being just someone blowing smoke? It's too big of a risk to take. July 2nd, 2015, we found the vehicle of the Iowa suspect in a parking lot of one of our local motels. Things just got serious. Not that it wasn't serious before. It got really serious. The guy who posted the ads is in our community. He posted the ads with the intention of, of seeing that a, a minor, two minors, a 10-year-old and a 13-year-old, were going to be tripped from Texas to Hayes, America for the purposes of having sex. And he's in our community. We got a major problem. Surveillance immediately is deployed. We had to get it right. We do 24-hour surveillance. The next morning, the person from Iowa gets in his vehicle. He kind of confuses us where he drives around town a little bit, then he leaves town. We're like, what? What's going on? Ultimately, he gets north of Plainville. We initiate a traffic stop and we arrest him. We interview him. He claims he knows nothing about the children. That it was somebody else's idea. He referring to the Ellis County resident. So we go and we locate the Ellis County resident. We survey him a little bit longer. We make a decision to take him into custody. We arrest him. We survey him. We interview him. Ultimately, these two were both duped by a third entity in another state, and the children never existed. That's what really happened. I told you, was it all smoke and mirrors? It, this is what it turned out to be. Could we take a chance? What is the chance that we actually had two children in our community for the purposes of being sex trafficking, and we just, oh, we don't think it's going to be real. That was too big of a chance to take. We were all in. Ultimately, both of them, both these defendants did make plea arrangements with the local court. One entered a plea for attempted human trafficking. I believe he got 12 to plus years in prison. The other one about a similar charge, a similar time, time served or will be served.
My point of that discussion or that explanation is to simply put, say, yes, we're Hayes America. We're not immune. It can and it has to some degree touched our community. Are you prepared to make sure you're not duped into the illusion of what the human traffickers are going to make you think is on the other side? 